Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Naked Audio Tutorial. This is Yong from SG Audio Hive. Today we will be going through the MMCX modification for the IE80 Pro. The process is exactly the same for the IE80s and uh, I mean and the IE80 Pro. They are essentially using the same shell. The it's uh same design, just the different face plate mount. That is all. Okay, so the process will be exactly the same for both models. We will start off uh, by introducing what tools we will need today. For the MMCX mod, we need something to remove the rubber covers. Uh, we need a screwdriver. There is a screw inside the shell. We need parts here. The MMCX female connector. The ones that we are going to use is the short version of the connector take a look at the size comparison here so, so the aim is to fit this into this we will uh, also need a Dremel we need to drill the insides of this and uh, glue sealing the, the thing because uh, after we open it up uh, there is some sort of mismatch with the sizing so we'll do a sealing after that okay blue tag your soldering materials soldering iron soldering solder okay let me prep all this we'll first start off by disassembling the IEM itself so there is a piece of uh, tap here, plastic tap. The one with the L indicator here. This is a plastic tap. We'll pry it with the tweezer. We should be using a pen knife for this because uh, it's actually thinner. Slot it into the slot. So we remove it. It will expose the the screws, the screwdriver inside. But anyway, I cannot get it to show, so we will just uh, unscrew it and show you the screwdriver. It's actually very dirty inside, so we have to do some cleaning up before we assess the screw. But now uh, we have managed to loosen the screw. Okay, as you can see here, the shell will come apart once the screw is off. Once the screw is off, uh, the whole shell will come apart. We'll remove it. Then we can see the two parts of the shell. Okay, we'll leave this for a while. This is the original connector. So it uses a very weird connector uh, originally, but we can remove it from the shell okay I'll just lift it for you to see so it looks like this the wires are actually very poorly made also okay so what we want to do always we have to identify the polarity of the driver so the black gum at the top on the left is the positive you can mark it out if you want you can mark it out so that uh, you don't make a mistake when installing it back okay we just first just uh, unsolder this and we'll see what we can do next what we will do okay so the aim is to get this onto here. We have to take a look at the length and the thickness. So now what we want to do basically I uh, just want to try to get a hole big enough for, for this which is actually not possible okay we need some epoxy also for this job 
but I'll try to do a drilling because uh, if I remember correctly the proper way is to cut off this whole stock and install the MMCX So as you can see, uh, the body itself is very thin but there, there is a, a way to get this into the stock so that uh, you, can, you can actually install it in this way but uh, from the looks of it right now, it's not uh, very possible Okay, the reason why we want to keep the stock is that uh, that's when you install the connector, it will stand out slightly so it's easier for you to wear because of the original design of the IE80 but it shouldn't be a, uh, in any matter for if you remove the stock okay, so we are going to remove the stock very easily just use a pen knife and you can cut it off okay it's very easy yeah. so we are going to grind this flat and we will solder, uh, uh, we will, we will do the Dremel down we want the hole to be more towards the face plate because if not it's going to hit the driver for the drilling part okay you can do this in two parts you can do the bottom and the top without I mean not in the closed fashion because now you can't see the driver you are going to uh, you might accidentally hit the driver So we sort of uh, are able to get it in. So we will do some observations. Okay. So I'll remove more materials on the face plate side. We'll remove more materials here. Okay. Actually, uh, fits now. So in this case, uh, let me just take a look. Okay, uh. as you can see, the connector is going to touch the driver. We'll do some uh, insulation down there before we close up, or we can turn the whole thing in this direction before we close it up, so that nothing is touching the driver. But we still have to insulate it after we do the soldering, and then uh, <coughs> generally we'll just uh, epoxy the top part and we'll close the cover, screw it back on and uh, it should be fine I'll go through the pit and we'll skip to the part where I do the ceiling okay for this step uh, this is actually quite uh, it's actually quite difficult to do because of the small uh, connector but uh, since we're using the thin wires uh, it's very actually very thin thin as in the size uh, so it's actually easier to solder this on if you are using any other form of wires it may be slightly more difficult okay so I'm not sure if you can see the soldering process but I'll just go through it they do sell the pre-thinned wires I mean pre-soldered wires so you can use that if uh, you have not yet uh, master soldering on this connector okay uh, so we always start off with the ground wire first place the wire onto the connector uh, we already thin the connector so we will let the heat flow the tin and the wire together okay the top one is easy but we always have to check for short circuits Ok, 
Okay, once we have the connectors done up, we are going to solder them. Okay, we have already done the the marking out of the driver. So, we will just solder them back to the own polarity. Okay, so I've done some uh, testing on the on the shape and size of the connector. We cannot actually push the connector all the way in, but it is going to be all right. Uh, we will insulate the, the bottom part and we will epoxy it. So we th some part of the the connector will be exposed on the exterior. You will see later, and we can do some finishing work or finishing work on it uh, after everything is done. So uh, I will show the photo at the end of the video, so you can stay till the end, or you can just uh, fast forward to it. You can see the end product. I will just go through very quickly uh, the finishing process right now. We got some epoxy. Uh, this uh, epoxy party. We will mix them in a one to one ratio. For all the material mentioned, uh, you can get them in the link. Uh, I'll put them in the description. We also have a full list of parts that you can take a look I mean, for your DIY projects. We'll mix this up first. We can also use some Teflon tape for the insulation. You can also use clear tape, whichever uh, you have at your disposal. Just use it. Okay, got some. Let's just cut some Teflon tape from here. So we'll wrap we'll wrap it around the connector. Okay, and uh onto the driver itself the top part of the driver we don't want the epoxy to stick onto the driver also okay so this is about what we want to achieve okay right now uh, because this is for both sides i've got to mod the other side after this so i'll split it into two first and another two there will be surplus uh, so don't <laughs> I mean, we, 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 we can't be stingy with the application of the epoxy because uh, if you mix too little, you're going to have to mix them all over again. But if you mix too much, it's alright. The, the balance that you can't use finish, you can just leave it and uh, use it as a gauge to test when does the connector itself harden fully so that you can use it for all your testing. Okay, so we avoid the driver we will just press it onto the insulation and the housing itself something like this then we'll slowly work the connector into place and we will close it up okay coil the wire around it first uh, so that it doesn't uh, get in the way okay remember there is a screw there's a screw somewhere here so it is here in response so uh, it is going to definitely be covered by the epoxy and everything so we have to do the screwdriver installation before everything hardens. Okay, we'll press it until uh, it's at the correct height. Okay, right now. Okay, we'll install back the screwdriver when we still can. So, uh, can this has been installed? Okay, so we see there are some gaps here. Unfortunately, we are going to have to use glue for this. Okay, for the excess epoxy, we we'll use a tweezer needle. We we'll rub it off.
and we want to make sure that the the connector is in the correct shape uh, I mean sorry uh, orientation okay so we have two options we use resin to cover up the outside and we color it or we use the epoxy to fill in the gap and uh, we'll shape it down after it's hardened fully and uh, color it so in this case I'll be using the epoxy So after this, we'll just wait for the connector to fully, I mean the resin to fully harden the party. And then we can do all the testing and all the adjustment we want for the for the shell. Okay, this part needs to be glued down. And that's all for the video. Okay, I'll show the final product photos at the end.